Chiang Mai, a city in northern Thailand that since the late 1700s has been known for its beautiful Buddhist temples, its lush mountain regions. I'm going to take you there on this episode of The Tattooed Traveler. We're also going to spend some time with elephants in their natural habitat. We'll hit the world famous Chiang Mai Night Bazaar, maybe take in a Muay Thai fight or two. And how about an authentic Sakyan tattoo? You know, the bamboo tap tap? Well, friend, if that sounds good to you, you're in the right place. I'm Todd Newton, The Tattoo Traveler. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel right now, and let's do it like only you and I can. Let's explore Chiang Mai. The strong Buddhist presence that Chiang Mai is known for is evident from the moment you step off the plane. This is a city that is over 700 years old and what you're looking at is the world famous Chiang Mai Gate. Welcoming you to Thailand's Rose of the North. There are over 300 temples in Chiang Mai, many of them located here in the section called Old City. I woke up extra early one morning and was fortunate enough to see the monks leaving a temple to collect their morning offerings. This was really something special to see. The streets were basically empty except for locals, civilians who sit alongside the curb here and place everyday items inside the baskets carried by the monks, items like potato chips, bread, bottles of water, even cigarettes. Items that the monks do not purchase for themselves after taking an oath of poverty. Monks are some of the most highly respected people in Thailand and when you encounter a monk, it is customary to place your hands together in a prayer-like manner, bow gently in hopes of receiving good karma in return you are not to touch a monk, as in offering a handshake. You cannot hand an offering directly to them. Rather, you place it on the ground and they will pick it up. But one of the most breathtaking moments of this trip to Chiang Mai occurred while visiting this particular temple, which dates back to the 1700s. And I stepped inside silently, removed my shoes, and was able to observe the monks and their morning chant. Pretty special. What's really interesting is that most men in Thailand will at some point in their lives become a monk. Some for only a day, a week, a month, others for as long as the rest of their lives. The belief being that the man's mother will eventually go to heaven as a result of his becoming a monk. And again, they live solely on the donations collected in boxes like these, donations made by the community, like we saw before, or from tourists like myself. Here's a slightly smaller temple, but certainly no less ornate. The artwork on the walls, the craftsmanship on these doors, really rivals anything that you would see in a museum. It's extraordinary. The color gold, as beautiful as it is here, has always been an integral part of Buddhist mysticism. The majority of these Buddhist statues are layered in gold and a select few in some of the larger and older, more popular temples are made of solid gold. All temples and prominent buildings in Thailand always feature a photo of the king who has held the throne since 2016. Thailand is certainly well known around the world for its culinary delights. I'm partial to the street food, but we did want to experience the imaginary jungle located about 15 miles north of the old city. And of course, on tap, some Chang beer. 
pineapple fried rice, delicious. And look at these spring rolls. They don't get any more fresh. Love the chicken. I believe some yellow curry was also on the menu today, but it was all about the ambiance here at the imaginary jungle. The tranquil sound of waterfalls, colorful flowers, shaded paths, all just added to what was really a great experience. And let's not forget about how affordable things are in Thailand. That's what draws a lot of tourists every year. Our entire meal costs less than $45 US. After lunch, we were ready to turn things up a little bit. So it was down to the world famous Chiang Mai Night Bazaar for a little revelry. The Night Bazaar is located in the center of the city and it'll take you a good few hours to cover the entire thing. It is rows of t-shirts and handcrafted jewelry, purses, of course, Chang beer, and the street food I mentioned before, well, this is where you're going to get some of the best. Scorpion, some grilled crocodile maybe, how about some frog skins, beetles, anyone? I'm with you, I'll take a pass on this. But friend, what you do not want to miss out on is the chicken, the pork, those heavenly spring rolls, and certainly don't pass on the pad thai made with chicken or pork or shrimp. Mm. Can't you just smell it now? And when that sweet tooth kicks in and you're ready for a little dessert, you don't have to go too far. Now, those of you that have been subscribers to the channel for a while, you know that I rarely go to a new city, much less a new country, without getting a tattoo. And here in Thailand, I hooked up with my old pal Tu, who is one of the most famed Sakyan tattoo artists in the country. A Sakyan tattoo is performed by putting ink on the tip of a bamboo stick and tapping it directly into the skin. Designs are generally geometrical, like the design I'm having placed on my leg or representing an animal. And the designs represent truth, wealth, kindness, attractiveness, love, spirituality, protection from danger. And they are far less painful than a traditional American tattoo. I can tell you that. The whole process took about 20 minutes. And now that I was all fired up from getting some new ink, I decided I would succumb to all the advertisements I'd been seeing for Muay Thai boxing, sometimes referred to only as Thai boxing. Super highly competitive, and it incorporates stand-up striking techniques with clinching techniques. And this is what they're battling for, the championship belt. Many of the locals refer to Muay Thai as the art of eight limbs, referring to two fists, two elbows, two knees, two shins on each combatant, and it was on. Kicks or knees are often followed by strikes from the fist, and when those knees hit, man, oof, you could feel it right here in the front row. A lot of these fighters, young men mainly, tear off a piece of a loved one's clothing and tuck it inside their trunks to bring them good luck during their fight. This is not an easy sport and the fighters take it very seriously. They begin training at a very young age and of the 10 matches that were on the card we watched, seven of them resulted in a knockout. The next morning, we were up and at them early and on our way to the Elephant Nature Park, an ethical elephant sanctuary just north of the old city. And the word ethical is key here because you will see elephant parks everywhere in Thailand, giving you the opportunity to ride the elephants, bathe them, even paint them in some cases. But you don't want that. And the elephants certainly don't want that. It causes them great stress. Elephant Nature Park, however, is a rescue and rehabilitation sanctuary. And I will put the link to the park in the description of this video. It gives you the opportunity to 
experience these beautiful animals up close and personal. Look at this. No zoom was used here. The elephants roam among you and you among them in a natural environment. You can enjoy a one-day visit where the park picks you up at your hotel, drives you to the sanctuary. You spend about five hours there, enjoy a nice vegetarian lunch, and then they return you to your hotel. Or you have the opportunity to volunteer at the park and spend two nights on the actual grounds of the sanctuary. In addition to over 300 elephants, there are 600 dogs in their rescue facility, over 300 cats, and many of these animals have been rescued from circuses or otherwise horribly abusive lives. But they're living the dream now. The owner and founder of the park is also the founder of the, oh, baby one. <laughs> there are two or three of those walking around. Is also the founder of the Save the Elephant Foundation, which to date has rescued 1,476 elephants here in Thailand alone. And while you're here, you'll learn about the elephant's life before coming to the park. You'll see this animal was injured horribly due to abuse and has been completely rehabilitated. No more chains for these elephants. Now they roam freely. Difference between the Asian elephants and the African elephant. I didn't know that. Just prepare to walk a lot at the Elephant Nature Park, but it's worth every step and you'll work up quite a thirst. Fortunately, Chiang Mai has no shortage of nice little cocktail bars where you can wet your whistle. Great way to spend our final evening in this wonderful city. Of course, a little Mekong was on tap. Mekong is Chiang Mai, Thailand's spiced rum, and they shake it up good. In fact, it is so popular here, made here even, they call Mekong the spirit of Thailand. And I can't think of a better way to end the evening. My friend, once again, we have seen it all. We have done it all. And that is exactly what this channel is all about. If you've enjoyed the elephants, the beautiful temples, the street food, the night bazaar, please do me a big favor and like this video and subscribe to the channel because I promise you we have so many great destinations coming your way. I'm Todd Newton, the Tattoo Traveler. Thank you for exploring the world with me and we'll see you next time around.